Yeah. Councilman Muscarella, can you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Please stand. Hang over your heart. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Councilman. Well done. Madam Clerk, please call the first public hearing. Okay, do not have any slips. Any member of the board wish to be heard? If not, anybody did not sign in and would like to be heard on item number one, let me know. If not, then please have a motion. Supervisor, I move that the public hearing be closed and the proposal of the law be adopted. Second. Good morning, my name is Vincent Alou. Um, with, um, uh, 
116 Park Hill Avenue, Massachusetts, New York. Uh, with Labor Local 66, um, Long Island, uh, New York, uh, Master Soccer Jurisdiction of the Labor's Union International, the Labor's International Union of North America. I just want to say good morning, first of all, uh, to Vice President and the board. And thank you very much for your time and consideration of this, uh, uh, what we feel is critically important safety bill uh, for Long Island. I, I just want to put uh, one quick uh, uh, clip of stats that I looked at this morning in regards to why construction site safety is so important and developing a culture of awareness of that. There are currently uh, 1,850 compliance officers for OSHA throughout the whole country. That's covering 130 million American workers on 8 million job sites, which is one OSHA compliance office for every 70,000 American workers. So the culture of safety has to start amongst us on the job sites. OSHA 30 is the minimum, minimum allowable standard for safety in the industry. And it all begins with us knowing each other's roles and tasks and, and the precautions needed. So I just wanted to put that on the record. It's critically important. We thank you very much for your support on this. Thank, thank you for all you do for the members and, and working with us really for the safety of all, all these individuals. We've, we look forward to any other suggestions and changes we can do to benefit the men and women in, in all these all these fields. They're doing a great job. So thank you very much. Thank you, Supervisor. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Uh, I have now Mr. Slaughter. Good morning, morning, advisor, members of the board. Uh, my name is Josh Slaughter, uh, 28 Thorn Drive, Shirley, New York. Um, I'm the Long Island Political Coordinator for the Mason Tenders District Council. And uh, just here to speak in support of Resolution 41 uh, 2022. Um, speaking on behalf of the 5,000 strong construction laborers residing here on Long Island. Now, this legislation is very important, and we appreciate you taking the time uh, to work on putting it together. You know, it will ensure that all construction workers employed on large construction, construction sites within the town have the proper safety training necessary to come home safely every day. Uh, this is critical for many reasons, uh, but most importantly, it is going to reduce the amount of construction worker deaths, which, is, uh, which do represent 24% of all deaths in New York State. So about a quarter of the deaths every year are on construction sites throughout the whole state. Uh, uh, there is one construct construction worker being killed every five days of the state, um, and it's easily preventable. And this legislation is, is key to reduce those staggering numbers. Um, also, while it isn't a union versus non union issue, uh, the New York Committee for Occupational Safety and Health, NICOSH, it issues an annual report titled Deadly Skyline. And the facts show that roughly 80% of the deaths are occurring on non union sites, and simply because workers aren't getting the proper training you know, through, those, through those contractors. Uh, so this will guarantee that all workers, regardless of who they work for, whether they're in union or non-union, will have the basic training needed to work safely. Um, it also will protect construction workers who have already completed OSHA 30, uh, because many job sites on, on Long Island, you know, you have workers who have the training, working along workers who do not have the training, and so it does leave everybody still in, in dangerous conditions and, and jeopardy, and this will uh, close that loophole. And well, lastly, it really does protect the, the, the general public. Construction sites that are 35,000 square feet and up, you know, they encompass many public spaces that residents frequent every day, whether it's our shopping centers, malls, renovations, office space, or even housing complexes. These construction sites are in the vicinity of where the public congregate, and ensuring these sites are being built by trained workers will prevent accidents that jeopardize public safety in the surrounding area. So I do again want to thank Supervisor Clavin and his staff for their hard work in drafting the legislation and bringing it forward. And I urge this body to approve the resolution today. Uh, doing so is the right thing in order to save lives here in the town of Hempstead. Thank you. Thank you very much. And again, thank you. Uh, you know, really, for, for working with us, it is about workplace safety. And that's a staggering number. 24% is absolutely staggering when you said that. I think everybody had the same reaction. So we're delighted to, to initiate this uh, and any other safeguards we can put along the way with all the big projects we have going here. Yeah, you know, you've a uh, board of uh, friends for the workers uh, across this region. Thank you. Good. 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 Mr. Keeley? Good job. Just real quick, just you guys, you know my father, we talked, my father was a local uh, 17A construction workers and uh, he brought home a lot of friends and some of them passed on the job. I wish they had the safety back then. So those guys are still be alive. Thank you for testing my guys. 
Mr. Good evening, I just for the record. Mr. Hill, would you speak a little louder into the microphone, please? Uh, can you hear me now? Yep. Okay. Uh, as previously stated, uh, I live in Floral Park and I'm a resident of the town of Hempstead. Uh, I'm also a proud uh, member of Labor's Local 66. And uh, as construction labor here on Long Island, I know the importance of this legislation, how important it is to the safety of all the workers who are working on Long Island, regardless of union or non union. The construction industry is very dangerous, which is why I continually uh, obtain and renew my safety training, including the OSHA 30 standard. Uh, while I have many other certifications uh, that you know help qualify me and of my other union members as uh, as uh, you know professionals on the job, uh, uh, it, it's actually the bare minimum. The OSHA 30 is a bare minimum. I'm glad that we're able to at least set the standard for this. Uh, whether workers, union or non-union, this training is necessary to keep those workers on the site and with them safe. Uh, the annual death toll for construction workers who were killed on a job site in New York over the last decade is 50. This is almost one worker killed every week. Uh, several years ago, New York City approved and adopted site safety training requirements for all five boroughs and immediately saw a reduction in deaths in those areas. While today's uh, proposed policy requires less training than our neighbors in the city, is important is an important first step. Simply put, this legislation will help save lives. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you very much, and maybe we'll actually uh, we'll do a follow up with everybody and talk about what they do in the city. And I want to see about it. Like you said, maybe this is the first step in, in trying to really protect people and do it the right way. And also sort of be in unison. That's, I think, part of the issue is also be in unison with other governments. But we want to thank you very much. And we appreciate you being here and giving the support to it. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Mr. Within the territory of the Merrick Fire Protection District. 
Okay, any member of the board wish to be heard? Okay, if you might have any slips, any member of the public wish to be heard and did not sign in? If not, may I please have a motion? I move the public hearing to close and the board adopt the item. Second. Supervisor Clayton. Aye. Councilman Perini. Aye. Councilman Esposito. Aye. Councilman Dunn. Aye. Senior Councilwoman Doosby. Aye. Councilwoman Miller. Aye. Councilman Muscarello. Aye. Okay, Madam Clerk, please call the next item. Yes, we have a, uh, a set of applications. I will read them uh, together. The application of BOLA EM Realty LLC for a variance from the provision of the GSS ordinance to maintain an existing service station and operate a convenience store as well as area, sign, and parking variances in America. And the companion application is from BOLA EM Realty LLC for modification of the Declaration of Covenants and Restrictions relating to that same property in America. Thank you. Uh, good morning. If you identify yourself as the applicant, give your name and address for everybody, we appreciate it. Of course, Mr. Supervisor. Good morning. My name is David Offen. I am from the law firm of Bramall and DeLeo 538 Royal Hollow Road, Suite 301 W, Melville, New York, for the applicant. Nice to see everybody. Nice to be in person once again. Uh, if you don't mind, uh, just a little housekeeping matter. I'm going to hand up quite a few uh, certified return receipt cards and a few that uh, were attempted delivery and didn't make it, so if I could hand those in. Thank you very much. Thank you. I believe after David's mailing and posting were previously also submitted uh, a couple of days ago on May 19th, I believe. So, <clears throat> you look at the aerial uh, which is posted up on the uh, video today. That's sort of what the property looks like today. 18, uh, 1589 Merrick Road over in Merrick. It's also known by Section 55, Block 180, Lot 32. Currently zoned Business X and was placed within the GSS Overlay District by Town Board Resolution in 1985. The site itself uh, is approximately 18,000 square feet in area with 180 uh, feet of linear frontage on Merrick Road and 100 feet of frontage on Central Boulevard. Um, sort of indicative of what I have always referred to as a legacy gas station. Smaller sites on relatively busy street corners indicative of what you saw built in the 50s, 60s, and 70s. This station happened to be initially CFO and built pursuant to Town Board Resolution Service 65, and I think the CFO was issued in 67. The existing building, which you see on the top portion of your screen, or the northern lot line, is just shy of 2,000 square feet in area. Uh, perpendicular to the existing building is the Pump Island Canopy, which is roughly 25 by or so, or 50, 50, 50, excuse me, 52, or 1,250 square feet. You'll see the tank map to the uh, immediate west, that's the gray area. The tanks will remain as well the tank map. Uh, right now, there are three fuel dispensers underneath the existing canopy. The canopy will remain in place. What the applicant proposes to do is to remove and replace the northern dispensers so that, such that they will now be four in total, uh, each being a two rows of two parallel to Merrick Road, going from six fuel positions to eight fuel positions. If you pan slightly to the east or to the right on the screen, uh, if that's possible, there you go. You'll see right now uh, that there's actually parking along the east lot line. There's a trash enclosure there. And frankly, it's a little disorganized. Uh, uh, but uh, the parking butting up against the neighboring building to the east, which is commercial, it's a small strip center, pretty much a zero lot line building, as you can see. That condition, if we can pull up the site plan, is going to go away. Uh, there we go. We can enlarge that a little bit. Excellent. So right now there's minimal green space on the site. BOLA, and I know the board is very familiar with the BOLA product. Uh, there are many BOLA stations throughout the town in the New York metro area. We'll be adding uh, a fair amount of green space to the site when and where feasible given the, the dimensional constraints of the site. We're going from a couple of hundred square feet of green space right along Merrick Road to about 2,600 square feet of green space. Right now, the um, mechanicals for the building, meaning uh, air conditioning, heat and such, are actually between the building and the north lot line. We're going to be removing those and moving those a little closer to 
Merrick Road, we're replacing them along the east side of the expanded building. And when I say expanded building, what I mean by that is Bola proposes a small addition of about 600 square feet or so on the east side of the building, which will allow for the operation of a convenience store, auto repairs, and uh, I'll just pause right there. I know there are a few folks in the audience who are residents who live behind uh, the uh, site, Mr. Supervisor, fellow board members, uh, who we, we had the opportunity to speak with prior to uh, the hearing this morning. Uh, they raised a couple of, they raised concerns and frankly complaints relative to the operation of the repair bays uh, at the site, particularly I think the division of cars on being left on the street. That being said, uh, this is the first we've heard of it. I will have uh, be meeting with Paul's principal immediately after this and bring this to their attention. But uh, I want the audience to know and the board to know that all uh, as part of the renovation of this site will be discontinuing the order of repairs. So what is currently uh, problematic will be eliminated uh, as part of the redevelopment of this site. The building will be used exclusively for the Bola Market brand convenience store and Tim Horton's coffee shop. Uh, we are now operating, I believe, three or four Tim Hortons within the town. And uh, as part of that, uh, there will be uh, exterior renovations to the building as well, consistent with the Bola brand. On the east side of the building will be a solid white PVC enclosure where the mechanicals will now be housed as well as the trash enclosure. Uh, access will remain pretty much the same as is on Merrick Road, right in, right out. Uh, there are currently two curb cuts which are on Central Boulevard. As you can see from the colored aerial, or site plan rather, up on the video screen, we are going to be eliminating those two curb cuts and putting in one centralized curb cut. So it will make for better and safer access onto uh, Central Boulevard. In addition to the uh, physical improvements I just mentioned, the existing uh, ground sign, which is so located at the southwest corner uh, of the site, is going to be replaced with a new ground sign, uh, which will provide greater and better visibility uh, for uh, the Bola brand, as well as gasoline and gas prices at the site. Um, and we're putting on new wall signage consistent with uh, similar wall signage at other Bola sites in town. Uh, including the uh, a wall sign for Tim Hortons. There's a couple of variances uh, as part of this application that are necessitated as a result of uh, the uh, Tim Hortons of Bola brand, which would be on the south facing facade toward Merrick Road. And um, again, this board, having seen similar applications, has previously granted variance relief for that. Uh, the site of West Hempstead 101 Hempstead uh, Turnpike comes to mind as well as the secret application we recently completed, which is uh, 43rd Park Road. Um, we do have with us today Nick Buscemi. Uh, Nick is with High Point Engineering and the Project Civil Engineers, and to the extent this board uh, has any questions related to the site plan, uh, Nick can address those. I also have with me today Andrew Lari from Stonefield Engineering. They are our traffic consultants a traffic report uh, was prepared and submitted in connection with this application. I believe that was dated May 17th. Uh, just summarizing the findings of the traffic report, uh, there will be no adverse impact as a result of traffic. Uh, turning movements, particularly during peak, are roughly uh, an addition of approximately 60 cars, so an additional turning movement once a minute. Uh, and ITE, which is the Institute of Traffic Engineers, the National Standards, says anything less than 100 really doesn't have an impact. Uh, and also as part of that study, we did a parking utilization, and parking is found to be adequate. Uh, even, even though we do need a small parking variance, parking at, uh, for the site will be adequate. Uh, and in addition, as the board knows, uh, sort of the parking at the pumps often serves as de facto for use of the convenience store. So uh, between what's provided on site with 10 spaces plus the eight spaces of the pumps, you're talking 18 million total. That effectively concludes our presentation. I'll reserve any further comment. 
I'm going to support it with any questions of myself. Yeah, Mr. Altman, I, I know we have a number of residents. A, a quick question for you. Your first picture, I, I, was, I was able to kind of uh, 25 cars squeeze onto what exists there right now. And that is because it's a service shop. So that's eliminated, so you're going to do that. How many parking spots did I see in front on, on the visual? Parking spots in front of the store. the store. So there would be, there, there would be 10 on, I think the plan, if I'm not mistaken, proposes 10 on-site spots. <laughs> No, like I said, I was when you had the, the first visual up, I was trying to count how many cars they squeezed in there, but that'll transform that. Okay, and then the other is, are you installing new pumps? Just one. And is that going to have availability for double digit? Is that going to be prepared for the double digit gases? <laughs> I read about that in the text. <laughs> I sincerely hope that's not the case. Yeah, me too. So we have a number of residents who are here, so we're gonna there might be some questions back and forth, but I appreciate you taking time. Hold on, I think Dennis Dunn has a question too. Yeah, okay. the, uh, I'm sorry, Captain. I might have missed it, but did you mention what that pink one is? On a, the the pink point, the center. Yes, that's that's yeah. the uh, the the pinkish color outline is actually the canopy pump island canopy is done. That's the main place. So how many uh Pumps one of these, like there's three now, we're going to be adding a fourth. So there'll be four total. Thank you. And there's no order of repair services now. But currently, there's order of repair services being done on the site, and you're eliminating that, correct? That is correct, Councilman. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, the number slips in. First, we'll start with uh, Anne Marie Vista. Ms. Vista? You don't want to talk? Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Uh, next, I have Alana Barr. Thank you. Hi, how are you doing? No, why don't, why don't we just give you a little bit of help in hand there today? Why don't we, uh, why don't we probably grab that mic and bring it, bring it over to you? Give a little assistance there. If you just give your name and address for the record, thank you. Couple of concerns. Uh, first of all, uh, within the past few months, there was some kind of antenna erected on the top of the building. I'm just curious as to what that is. I couldn't answer that. I don't know about what the antenna is. Uh, if anything, after the meeting, I'll ask my deputy building commissioner, uh, Danny Liu, I'll just hand up there and wave. Smile this time. And uh, he'll meet you after, and we'll, we'll send somebody down to find out what that is, okay? Okay. I live in 6 West Mullen Road. I'm directly behind the station. And my concern is um, being that it's going to be open 24 hours. Anything open 24 hours becomes a hangout. Right now, throughout the night, at times, there are cars that are getting gas. Their radios, you can probably hear from there to here. That's how loud they are. Windows are starting to open because the weather's getting warmer, and the residents of the street have to listen to that. Is there any kind of signage that's going to be put up saying, please turn your cars off, no loitering, anything like that? Because sometimes it's impossible. Well, I, I, don't, throughout the night. I don't represent this area, but I know that we've dealt with issues like this. Um, in certain stations uh, in my district that were owned, operated, and maintained by the Bolo Group. Uh, and they've always been, uh, you know, they've answered the phone right away, they've addressed any issues that we've had. Um, and I'm sure, I know that uh, Councilman Carini has a great working relationship with the police department over there. And I'm sure that the precinct will be on board too. But for the, the times that I've worked with, with Bolo uh, in any of their stations, they've always made sure uh, that their neighbors are taken care of and, uh, you know, address any issues right away. Well, right now they're not being addressed. Well, uh, well like, like I said, I, I, I don't, is Bolo officially taking control of the station? Not yet. Okay, that's, that, that's fine. So, what, Mr. Altman, I know that in other areas, you may have been nice enough to put up signs about uh, noise and respect to the neighbors. Uh, perhaps we could follow up this resident and, and see if we can have some sort of, you know, indication to be respectful of neighbors who have lived in this vicinity? Absolutely, Mr. Supervisor. That was part of our pre-hearing discussion today, and, and, you know, we've had this issue arise on a couple of prior occasions. I find it's always posted at the pumps and around the station, the no idling radios to be turned off, things of that nature. Right, the key word is respect, and it seems that lately 
people who have lost sight of what that means. Uh, the other issue is, my concern is garbage. Uh, garbage attracts roads. You know, we need something addressed where that there's not going to be anything, any kind of food. Well, to speak to speaking around, people buy stuff I see in the street now. Their wrappers are in the street from the small. I, I can't. I can't say one thing, and, and you know, Mr. Alma will address it. The stations are really clean on the outside. That's the one thing I can't say because I, I, you know, uh, I drive around. And I get gas all the time, and I have to say the one thing I do do acknowledge about them is the cleanliness of the station and the surrounding area. Mr. Alman, maybe you can address where you'll have your the dumpster, uh, and also maybe, maybe make them reassure. Because, like I said, it, it, the the cleanliness has always been a, it's something that. Sort of as a draw to the, the, the markets in particular. Well, waste paper baskets, so this way when they finish eating whatever it is they're buying, or don't finish what they're eating, instead of throwing it in the street on the side of my house or in front of my house. No, absolutely. Like I said, it's wrong. He's out there, and Anne Marie can attest to it every morning. He's out there with a, a pickup to pick up garbage that people just throw in the street overnight. Well, do me a favor, right behind you is my executive assistant, Melissa, right here. Right hand. She'll give our contact information. Uh, speaking from experience, Bullock operates very clean sites. If for some reason it's not cleanly, or if the police department is having issues there with noise complaints, you can reach out to uh, Melissa right behind you. Wait, Melissa, say hello. She'll take all your information and provide you uh, contact information. If there's any issue there with noise pollution stuff, I will reach out to the precinct uh, commanding officer personally and make sure it's okay. And, and I don't know if you heard, Mr. Mr. They haven't taken possession of the gas station yet. Okay. That, 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 you know, that's I said, like, you might see a change of a good neighbor coming in from, like I said, right now, I, I can't. You get 25 cars squeezed in there. Um, and Mr. Alton, you can talk to the, the policies of, of Ebola and but, you know, the, the cleanliness of it. Yeah, you know, that's one of the things the company prides itself on. And I know this board is aware of maintaining uh, immaculately clean sites, the landscaping itself. I know Ebola's uh, uh, site maintenance program requires the site to be inspected hourly for refuse cleanup. In addition, I have provided uh, uh, the speaker with, with my card as well, so if there is ever an issue and she can't get out of Ola, she can call me directly. My, my, my phone is always open. And the landscaping will be maintained on a regular basis? Impeccably. It's done, and it's done seasonally and it's rotated in and out. Okay, and one more issue uh, that I had about two weeks ago, they replaced a section of fence bordering my backyard, my property, and um, in doing so, they damaged a portion of my fence, which was erected by my fence company to block an opening to keep my dogs in my yard safely. And they just finished the fence and left, and this piece of fence of mine was just left wobbling around. Once again, you have been taking possession of the scan station, right? Okay, so the, the issue is they don't own it yet. It's they're not there yet. So again, why don't we have my deputy commissioner building? We'll go down and we'll send somebody down there to talk to the current owner of the gas station, the exiting, uh, you know, owner yeah, of it, to yeah. see about rectifying that. Yeah, yeah the clear. fencing that they took down that was broken is still. No, I, I, absolutely. So, Mr. Lee is going to. If you want to go back right now, there you will go. With you, okay. Right. You can look. You can also send me a picture of the uh, the damaged fence, and I'll bring it to Bowles' attention. That's very nice. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next, I have Jody Brinson. I need to say one thing about Bola. I have Bola in my district, and I'm telling you, they really keep everything very, very nice. As a matter of fact, we're getting one soon, and they've already cleaned up all of the stuff that was there. They should have been there. So I'm out of that. Thank you, Connie. Next, I have Jody Brinson. If you go to the back there and give your name and address, that'd be awesome. Good morning. My name is Jody Brinson. I'm an attorney at Nassau Suffolk Law Services, Wild Helen Kyla Way, Fifth Floor, Hempstead, New York, one five five zero. I'm here. Good morning. Representing the Romaldo family who resides at 2452 Central Boulevard, which is around the corner from um, the proposed new BOLA establishment. Um, I just wanted to say, after speaking to Mr. Altman, we did speak with him 
outside. He was very gracious, explained everything, and did allay the family's fears and concerns about the new establishment. Their primary issue was the parking of abandoned vehicles, vehicles being repaired, vehicles associated with the repair shop, which will no longer be in existence. So after talking to him and also discussing what's going to be done to keep noise at a minimum and the discontinuation of the repair station, we are in support of their application. And uh, Ms. Romaldo also wanted to comment. Hi, good morning. My name is Ben Romaldo. I live at 2452 Central Boulevard. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I just wanted to basically say I agree with the proposal. Um, during COVID, my father was unfortunately hospitalized and the mechanics had, crossed, um, had parked across the street and, you know, two ambulances showed up, causes, you know, reckless, um, I guess you could say, um, positioning and, you know, to other neighbors, incoming traffic, it's dangerous. Um, and when we've had a lot of issues with them just leaving the cars abandoned on the street, so we do agree with the proposal and we would like for this to um, be approved um, and move forward. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, like I said, you know, it, Bull has generally been good neighbors, uh, what we've seen, and they, they have cleaned up areas. As I said, I, I saw the 25 cars, so I get what you're yeah. saying. So hopefully this will be a transition for the entire area to, yeah. to a better neighbor that, that, that you'll enjoy having there. Yeah, de I mean, definitely for sure, we're definitely looking forward to this. Instead of having a headache, you know, having nowhere to park, especially coming home after a long day of work. Yep. And well, we walking from like another street and then getting other neighbors mad because we're taking their spots. Yeah. Want to do that, you know? well, well, we appreciate you taking the time to, to all of you to come down and, and, and one talk to Mr. Alton and his team and also express uh, you know what your, your support is very thoughtful. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. I do not have any other slips. Does anybody else wish to be heard on this item? If not, Mr. Oh, yes. If you go to the back and give your name and address at the mic, that would be great. Okay. You go, no, you go to the back there by the mic. Just give me. I have uh, something to give to the board. No, no, if you just go to the podium so we can hear you on the microphone. Okay. Is this on, the, on this is on this item, then? Yes. Okay, just give your name and address. My name is Mofi Cherry. I live in 12 Arcade in Elmont, New York. Um, there is uh, a big issue with building the Pac-Man. No, um, it, it, are you speaking on this particular uh, item, yeah, the gas station? No, I'm talking about building the apartment. I applied for a permit since June no, 20, no, we're, 21. We're, we're, we'll, give you, we'll give you a chance. We're just dealing with this okay. hearing right now. No, yeah, people don't have to know what's going on. No, I, I know, but right now we're, just, we're doing comments on this application. You'll have your opportunity, okay? Yes, okay. Okay, no problem. Uh, Mr. Altman, is there anything else you wanted to, to bring up before? No, Mr. Supervisor, that concludes our presentation. And I want to thank uh, the neighbors for actually supporting you. And I appreciate their candor and feedback as it relates to the current situation there. And, uh, we will do our best to make sure it gets improved and to eliminate the problems. And I know this board uh, believes that as well. Right. Thank you, Mr. Alton. Thank you, your team. Thank you for the residents who, who came out here today. Um, if that's all, may I please have a motion? I move the public hearing be closed before we got the item. Second. Aye. Councilman Green. Aye. Councilman Diaz Pazita. Aye. Councilman Dunn. Aye. Senior Councilwoman Goosby. Aye. Councilwoman Miller. Aye. Councilman Muscarella. Madam Clerk, just for clarification, and that was uh, application 10 and 11 called simultaneously to just approved? You are right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Have a good afternoon. You too. Take care, bye bye. Um, next, uh, please call the decision calendar. Yeah, so on the decision calendar, we have uh, three decisions. Number 12 is a resolution uh, adopting a CEQA and determination of non-significance in connection with an application to rezone a parcel of land located in Highland Park. Okay, may I have a motion on items 12, 13, 14, decision calendar? Or can we do that separately or not? We do separate. Separate? Well, That's fine. Then I have to ask for a motion on uh, move the call. Supervisor, I move that the decision be granted. Second motion. Supervisor Clayton. Aye. Councilman Creamy. Aye. Councilman DSC. Aye. Councilman Dunn. Aye. Senior Councilwoman Goosby. Aye. Councilwoman Miller. Aye. 
John Mastrom or any town uh, controller. Uh, that is to provide funding for the uh, uh, part-time uh, salary of the deputy uh, town, town uh, supervisor. Deputy supervisor? Yes. He's a part-timer? Well, I wouldn't call him part-timer by heart. I'm very, very excited, and many of you may not know, but today we're making history in the town of Hempstead by appointing Dorothy Goosby the first African-American woman deputy supervisor in the town of Hempstead's history. And we're glad to have this moment. I'm glad all of you can participate. Dorothy is a long-serving member of not only the community, but of the town board, uh, an advocate of her community, uh, and someone that looks out for every resident in the town. So I'm glad that all of us joined here today in making this, this motion, and I'm glad all of you can sit to celebrate and acknowledge what a wonderful individual she is and what she brings to the town. So thank you very much, Pekachi. I just want some clarification. Um, so she's getting an increase of salary to be deputy supervisor? She, she is. Okay, because that never was before they were having uh, I think she I think she warrants it, Ms. Pekachi. I don't think so. Oh, Ms. Pekachi, I think, I think she does. I'm allowed to have my opinion, and you're allowed to have yours, and that's why it's America, and you shouldn't interrupt me, and I will interrupt you. Thank you. <laughs> Did something get that on the record? <laughs> <laughs> Next, I have Bonnie Garon. Thank you. Morning, Mr. Garon. Your name and address is forever. Bonnie Garon, Rockville Center. Uh, I, I too have some questions about item 19, which is uh, hiring a photographer. One of the things I noticed is there is no maximum amount to be paid. Almost every uh, resolution has a maximum. This simply states the uh, hourly rate, but there is no maximum that this person can be paid? Uh, no, again, it's, there's no maximum until it's a line item. It's based on how many hours uh, Issues. But the board is authorizing a, uh, an unlimited number of hours. There is no, many, many contracts that go by have a maximum amount. Well, uh, Jeff, Commissioner, you're going to be monitoring what hours the individual may or may not get. They potentially might not get any hours. If there's an issue of flagging for the board, can you, can you verify that? That's correct. We actually had this some years ago in 2016, 17. We had about six or seven on call photographers, so to speak. And we monitor the hours, and they were rarely used. It's just nice to have in the event that there's vacations and emergency or there's more than one. Or, or COVID. We did run into that issue a couple of times. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And how was this individual selected? Because that's not recited here either. Was there an RP? Was there a request for bids? How did you pick this person? This person was recommended through the photography department, and we, uh, we looked at his resume. We were very comfortable with the person. That's interesting because where is the photography department and how many people are in it? Because I looked at the master resolution from January that listed all the departments and employees, and there is no photography department. No, it runs through general service. Yeah. I know, but this recites uh, several times here the photography department. If it doesn't exist, why is it in here? It's the department within general services. That's why it says general services. Yeah, I understand it. There's a list. There's a DGS animal shelter, DGS building and grounds, DGS cemeteries, DGS traffic control, and general services. There's no, I've not seen any DGS photography department. Why do you say it if it doesn't exist? We refer to the people who work in that area as in the photography department, but they're under DGS. I see. So that don't exist. They take it up. Uh, I'm just going to move on then to uh, item 35. This is for downtown revitalization uh, in Baldwin. And um, this grant agreement uh, indicates that it's effective as of May 11, 2021, which is more than a year ago, uh, it was signed by the chief of staff in um, December. Uh, can you tell us why this took so long? As I understand it, this allows a total of $480,000 that the town can uh, award uh, from $10,000 to $200,000 to local businesses for certain purposes. And the businesses sorely need these funds. 
So can you tell me why this took so long to get on the board's calendar and what the time frame is right now? Uh, Commissioner Rockett, uh, John, as you walk up, th this is uh, for the, the downtown revitalization of Baltimore, am I correct? Okay. Okay. So it is an award to the small business who made representation. This is Commissioner Rockett. Good morning, Supervisor members of the town board. Uh, resolutions 35 and 36 uh, both have to do with the DRI for the downtown uh, revitalization initiative for Baldwin. And I believe that this resolution is just um, uh, a, uh, a ratifying and confirming of it because, as you said, the chief of staff did sign this in December, and this is now we're just moving ahead with these specific projects. Well, well what is the timeline? Have you uh, put together or conducted the outreach that's required? To let businesses know that this is available? No, no, no. This is this is part of the PRI where we had public hearings and public forums even during the pandemic for the revitalization. We did this with the state. No, excuse me, Supervisor. This is particular funding to be awarded by the town to businesses in this in the Baldwin revitalization area. And there's a particular requirement in here for a marketing plan. It's very detailed. It says the town will conduct uh, outreach uh, to all property owners and business owners of these particular grants being available. Has that been done? Has it been started? Is it planned? Okay, so to answer your questions, yes, it has started. Um, VHB has been approved by the town board as a consultant that's part of that $600,000 grant. They have put together the requirements and the application of what actually needs to be, um, how to apply for these funds. That is complete. We have not had the public hearing yet because we are waiting for these resolutions to be completed so we can have a, a community meeting with all interested parties at the same time. And when do you expect that that will happen or when will these information uh, flyers be uh, circulated, etc.? When will this happen? Uh, probably next month. Probably next month. Okay, I'm out of time. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for supporting our flyers. Uh, I don't have any other items or people want to speak in the administrative calendar if they did not sign in, which is to be heard. If not, may I may have a motion on the administrative calendar. I move the administrative calendar in its entire except I recuse myself from 37 and 39. Second. Supervisor Clayton. Proudly on all items, yes. Councilman Greeny. Aye. Councilman Esposito. Aye. Congratulations, Deputy Supervisor Goosby. Councilman Dunn. I'd like to congratulate our Deputy Supervisor, uh, Senior Councilwoman Dr. Goosby, for becoming our first, uh, well, actually not the first deputy, but you are an uh, incredible addition to this board. You've been helping me all along with the past time that I've been saying before. I vote aye. Councilwoman Miller. Aye, and congratulations, well deserved. And Councilman Oscar. Congratulations and absolutely. Deputy Supervisor, congratulations. <laughs> Supervisor, I make a motion to adjourn. Can I get a second on that? I second. Good job.
that the town board feels this program is important, it should also be put online. I also mentioned that the town has not put its Narcan training course online either. In addition, I suggested the town board spend $12 million of federal CARES funds, as much as the town spent on air conditioning upgrades and opioid addiction programs. Mr. D. Esposito's response was many parents and grandparents who thanked him for providing Narcan training have a different mindset than me. My mindset is to make government efficient. My mindset is to allow residents who have, to have access to critical information at any time that is convenient for them. My mindset is to use $12 million in federal COVID-19 funds to help people overcome their drug and alcohol addiction. My mindset is for the town to distribute COVID-19 funds in a fair manner. Mindset, my mindset is if upgrading air conditioning systems is necessary in fighting COVID-19, then the town should have notified applicants of federal CARES funds that this was a valid expense instead of putting more than half of their federal care funds they receive in its reserves. If any of the town board members disagree with this mindset, I respectfully ask them to speak up and explain to their constituents why they oppose putting drug awareness programs online, why they oppose giving $12 million of federal CARES money to fund substance abuse programs, and finally, why do they feel federal CARES funds should be only used to upgrade air conditioning systems belonging to the town of Hempstead government and not provide federal CARES funds for other government or charitable agencies within the town? So I'll speak to the drug awareness. So the, the, the issue that we have with putting drug awareness online is that the purpose of holding the classes throughout the town of Hempstead is to provide those who attend with the life-saving drug. It is a drug. It's a prescription drug, Narcan. I am not, nor is our medical director, comfortable with putting Narcan in the mail and mailing it to people. That is why the class is not put online. And then you're talking because we would be in trouble because then we have people taking it without our knowing it. So this way we know who gets it and who's going to take it instead of having the entire community who does take drugs get those. And, and clearly they're well attended. You were here that night. You didn't want any Narcan because you were here to videotape and I guess make a point. But people do attend these meetings and whether there's three people there or 300 people there, when they leave with the drug, it is a prescription drug, Narcan, we hand it to them, they fill out a form, we keep the lot number and the case number of every box that's distributed so we can keep track for the grant. I don't feel comfortable mailing drugs through the, through the U.S. Postal Service, and neither does our medical director. I think it's pretty simple, and it's been explained in the past. I'm not sure why we're going to continue on down this same road criticizing an actually pretty good program. Stand corrected, it's not a pretty good program. It's a very good uh, program. Thank you. It's a successful yeah, program. I'm starting my clock before I'm speaking. I'm waiting for you to finish and they starting my clock. Oh, I'm done. I've said okay. my piece for many times. Let me finish that. Well, before, before, First of all, you ask, you ask oh, us to speak. No, 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 you're wasting my time. Please let me finish my time. This is not a speech. Okay, it's not a speech. It's not a speech. It's not a speech. It's not a speech. Relax. Five minutes ago, you said don't yell and interrupt me. I, I, this is my time. You asked the question. I was answering it. I didn't finish my statement. Go right ahead, Mr. Gatti. Can I finish? None of the, none of the response here to you people, which I didn't even bring up, is I'm not asking anyone to put any drugs in the mail to people they don't know. Well, you are, because you're, you're asking. I'm done now. All right, great. Now let me continue with my statement. I got more on my miscellaneous calendar. I received a letter from the Ethics Board on May 18th regarding my ethics complaint of October 18th, 2021. Can we go back to Narcan for a minute? The letter was dated March 3rd, 2022. I would like to know if the town attorney knows when this letter was actually written and if it was written on March 3rd and why it took two months for it to set for the Ethics Board to send it to me. Also, the letter did not contain all the issues mentioned in the complaint. Why is that? And I'm asking the town attorney to answer. Ms. If he doesn't want to respond, I want to give him an opportunity to respond. Mr. Bricacci, uh, you've, we've enjoyed your company for over a decade here, and you know this is the public 
you know, comment section, and, and you know that it's your opportunity to speak, which you so passionately do. Um, I would recommend uh, either a, a phone call or, a, or you would love to send a formal email to the town attorney as a follow-up. I sent an email on May 18th after I received it to Mr. Leventhal, CC the town attorney, and he didn't respond. I sent the letter up on April 1st about this, and he did not respond. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Country. Have a wonderful Memorial Day weekend. Next, I have uh, Bonnie Garon. Good morning. Name and address, please. Bonnie Garon, Rockville Center. This may sound surprising, but there are elected officials who actually engage in dialogue with their residents, who answer questions, provide information, and treat them with respect. And those elected officials find they can actually learn things from those interactions. They're better able to understand and meet the needs of their residents. And the residents know that their elected officials are hearing them and working for them. And that doesn't happen here, unfortunately. Now, the prior uh, back and forth notwithstanding, uh, your policy of no questions or interactions, unless, of course, you want to say something self-serving, your policy of no questions or interactions at public comment, sitting there stone-faced while people come up here and ask you uh, sometimes heartfelt questions, is disrespectful, it's not useful for residents or for the board, and in my opinion, it's not good government. And finally, uh, Mr. Supervisor, your habit of waiting until the speaker's time is over so they can't respond, and then engaging in your own uh, self-promotional monologue uh, when no comment is permitted because the person is out of time. In my opinion, that behavior is bullying and it's not appropriate. It makes you look like you're afraid to engage with your residents. And you know, it's no, I used to wonder when I first started coming here why there were so few people who wanted to um, take advantage of this opportunity to actually speak to their elected officials. But having been coming here now for about a year, regularly, it's no, it's no wonder to me anymore why so few members of the public come here uh, to these meetings to try to have input with the town government. You know, I know it's not easy. I'm an attorney, and I'm used to standing up and speaking. But I know it's not easy for most people to come to a meeting like this in front of many people and stand up and, and, and speak. Uh, it's even harder when you see how people are treated. You know you won't get answers. And, and often you won't be treated nicely. Uh, it's easier for residents to just stay home, which seems to be what you apparently want. Uh, people staying home and not coming and having interactions with you I think that's a shame, and I think we deserve better. Okay, thank you, Ms. Brown. Have a great Memorial Day weekend. Next, I have a Marie, Ms. Sharon. I have something else. Oh, if you just go back to the, the, the mic there. You give me name and address, that'd be awesome. Thanks. We'll take it, ma'am. Just give me name and address again. Thanks. I'm sorry about earlier. Um, my name is Marie Cherry. I'm here um, because of building department. I did not buy, I bought two properties in Elmont back on March 2021. I applied for a building permit um, because I buy the house with existing bathroom in the basement so i want to legalize everything make sure everything is legalized building department will give me hard time and very disrespectful not all of them not the inspector the inspector very nice people you get um plumbing they're very nice and the commissioner also very nice person but all of the staff they're treating me badly they even call me cripple 
I was surprised to come in building, uh, in government building, where people will suspect calling me. Don't call me by my name. I come and I say good morning. What is crippled doing here? It was her. I had her in the hospital. I was, who want to be crippled? So it was her. So now I just want, why they don't want to give me permit? I cannot sell the property. The property been in contract since November. They don't want to close with open permit. No one wants to give me the permit. I call everyone. No one wants to give it to me. But I would like to know, what should I do? Now, they said they're not going to give it because you need to do um, a cert division. Cert division is done. It's complete. Even it's complete now, I bring the certificate now, cert division accepted. So they, they still don't want to give me the permit. Now, they turn around, you got to knock down your fence. I got a picture for all the fence I take on the area, more higher than mine. Now you're going to knock down your fence. I don't mind to knock down the fence. When they're going to come down to do the final inspection to sign off the open permit, I want to sell those property. I am losing money. I am paying mortgage $3,895 a month for one, $2,690 for, um, for the other one. If I'm losing money for that one year, do the mark, you see how much money I lose. I could just put the house for sale in two months. So why are the investors come here to get permit in seven days, and some investors come here, they cannot get permit when they want to do things the right way. You get the chief police in Nassau County come and tell me, thank you, you buy this property. They used to call us every day because we were the judge in Syria. Since you come here, we don't get your call. Why I'm doing good thing in Nassau County, and they refuse to give me permit. I don't understand. Okay. Well, I know I see the, the building commissioner and the deputy there. Um, perhaps you can go to the back room and, and talk about it, and they can walk you through the process of what it's going to take to, to get to the finish line and go get the, uh, the, the CEO. Do you agree? So if you, if you go to the back there, they're going to meet you right now in the back, the commissioner and the yeah, deputy commissioner. The commissioner know about my case Okay. 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 Well, I'm, I'm, I'm asking. I got you, and I'm, and I'm asking to go back there right. Now. I got you, and I'm asking to go back there with you right now. Okay. No problem. Uh, next, I have Dorothy Claus. Hey, Miss Claus, how are you? You need a little help? You want to? Well, we'll have you. What? Somebody, Bobby, Bobby, Bobby. Put you in the text. Perhaps you can bring the mic over to uh, Miss Claus. Take Miss Claus. Here we go. Good morning, if you just give me name and address of the record. Good morning. The uh, clause residing at 682 Cottage Street in Union Day. I was here last meeting and I was assigned someone in the back to go over my complaint. I haven't heard anything since, so I'm here today. I took time last week to go over my deed with a magnifying glass. This is my property. The lot number is number 11, not 00010. I'm in my home since 1975. It's all paid for. I pay my taxes on time. I try your offices to get appointments to see you all, but nobody's available. You give a donation? I call. Oh, yes. I make trips to the assessment office. By paying for rides to go, I cannot drive because I lost my three quarters of my sight. I say, you know, when I attend the meeting, I was dressed casually. This is the way I used to go to work before I retired. This was one of my outfits. Maybe close to you all make a person, it doesn't. The residence is who you are supposed to be meeting with, else you don't know what's going on. 
Meeting your counterparts does not answer or take care of the situation. Now, I am feeling my time is short on my block. We have lost about 22 people already within the last three years. I don't know when my time is going to be, but I want to get my affairs in order. I cannot have my property rearranged by your county and no explanation. <laughs> As for the taxes, I've been calling the state, calling Social Security to get 1099s. You know what the problem is? Nassau County is behind sending information to the state. That's why we didn't get our enhanced tax, our enhanced stock reduction. The only thing they haven't filed for me was 2017. So, Ms. Claus, obviously the, the issue stems with the Nassau County Department of Assessment and the state handles the enhanced star, and I know that one of the state. Excuse me, I just told you, I am not a novice to administration. I used to be on a I, I understand that very well, this, but I'm also well, saying, I, I, no, no, this is. You assign someone and, last and time. And they just, they, they, they should have called me back. But by the way, I'm not going to disagree with you at all on Ms. that. Respect say that when you tell a resident or anyone, you're going to call them back, call them back. Let them know where to stand or send something in writing. If you can change my lock number in your office, then you should have been able to send me out something. Ms. Claus, but the, the Captain, Ms. Claus, why, why is the lock number we can't, we, we don't change lock numbers. It's that's not, them. but no, no, that's you not, that, that, no, no, I'm not disagreeing with you, disagree, but that's not no, the town. No, 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 Ms. Claus, it's it's Nassau County Department of Assessment. The town doesn't have the authority to do that. And I know that Matt Pacione was nice enough to call to the state, and I haven't called him back. But the town of Hempstead can't change lot sizes, can't change any of that. Excuse that they, me. Excuse Ms. Ms. Are Ms. Claus, no, I'm not. I'm not at all. I'm just telling you that you we don't control that. But it's I the Nassau. Sir, okay. sir, do not, do not. Ms. Claus. Ms. Claus, excuse me. I, again, I was doing, ma'am, 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 they have lot number 010. Zero zero. See, this is my clock number. You see, this is my property. It's 115125. It has been that way. I purchased my house at 75. I move in there 75. Ma'am, ma'am, I know that Matt from my office. I, I, now, I don't represent Uniondale, but Matt from my office happened to be in the back of the room. Can you represent Uniondale and that Hempstead address, please? Yes, I think, I think there's an option here for us to reach out to your county legislator, Kavan Abrahams. Ms. Claus, Ms. Claus, walking up to you right now is Cherise Vanderhall. She's a deputy receiver of councils to the receiver of taxes. I, 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 I don't know that. But this 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 you attorney this know, attorney you right here. I don't know who it was. <laughs> it, 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 she's gonna help you. If your bosses can help me and they're telling me it has been done, what could you do for me now? Ms. Van der Hall, I appreciate you giving your help again. Thank you very much. Check the assessment office and send me something in writing. Okay. I'm finished, you know. Okay. Thank um, you. Next I have a dip. Time out. Yeah, Good morning, Miss Madden. If you give your name and address for the record. Good morning, Mayor Madden. Senior Councilwoman. 
think a lot of that could be resolved by communication with this woman for two weeks waiting for a phone call. Sounds like you have supervisor, people that make you look really good and people that make you look really bad. Miss, please, you know, she needs to go to the county. We don't have what she's asking us for. We're trying to help her to do that. You know we don't have a, a deeds and so forth here. You know that. Excuse me? I didn't know you were addressing me. It's not a Q&A session. I don't session. want her to get more upset than what she is. So please, we would have her, you know, that's communication problems, uh, Councilwoman. That's a community, and someone failed here. And I would want to know the names of the people that were supposed to call this woman. The, the, the person that failed this woman is the Madison County Department Assessment in New York State. And we shouldn't look to school. And, and you know what? The fact that we're trying to help her is what we're trying, is the right thing to do. But, and you know, and everybody knows it here that we don't control the second block and lot and changing that information. And obviously, no one's helped her at the county level, and we're gonna do the best we can. And that's the reality of it. But, you know, we're helping her, and we shouldn't try and make it look like we're not, or we're doing things to her. That's, that's just not the right thing to do. Well, it sounds like she had an issue with no one responding to her after the meeting. So, um... I actually, it's wrong. You're wrong about that. Again, if you're just making a representation, that isn't right. Because Steve met with her right after the meeting the last one. So it's it's just not a fair representation, man. Please. Let's move on because my clock was going before I even started speaking. Um, I would just like to confirm that there is no longer an appointment needed to adopt at the animal shelter. Is that the case? Morning, Mr. Marina. There are no appointments necessary to look up to that. Okay. Okay, thank you, Supervisor, for that. I mean, quite honestly, I'm appreciative, but it, it should have not taken public outcry or for me to come to these meetings to get to that point. I would be appreciative if you would continue to be proactive instead of reactive, uh, because we're still dealing with the same management that treats the animal shelter like a private uh, shelter instead of a, a public-funded shelter. Um, there are currently 63 dogs in the animal shelter. Only one is in foster care, and that's only because of a volunteer. Um, you have major problems at the shelter. There's no foster provider coordinator, no volunteer coordinator, no events coordinator, uh, no rescue coordinator. It's just basically the same few people wearing 10 hats, um, hiding people behind emails where no one signs them um, so that the public can't figure that out. And that was to replace the top experts that were in the animal shelter that did all of these things and brought the shelter up and had a glowing reputation uh, until this story took over. Um, volunteers are being told now that they can't work, walk certain dogs because the dog's behavior is deteriorating, which also comes as no surprise. Um, I'd like to know when these volunteers will be trained to handle dogs instead of being told they can no longer handle dogs. I'm sure the director will let people know when it's available, Ms. Madden. I appreciate bringing it to my attention as always. Thank you, Supervisor. I, I'm not counting on him because chances are probably most of the people there haven't received a memo that the adoptions have opened up, and I'm sure that's a result of elected officials being very much aware that the place is run and looks like a morgue instead of a facility that should be, people should be bumping into each other. Um, even employees are leaving. Please read their resignation letters and they're fostering elsewhere. You have a major problem with the foster care program when you have one dog out of 65 being fostered. Okay. And I do appreciate you pointing out this, Matt, you know that. Now, I appreciate that, and uh, thank, thank you for opening up adoptions. Thank, thank you, and I think there'll be other you know, things <laughs> opening up down there, too. Um, um, to it. A good Memorial Day weekend to you, and uh, now I have Stu Pro. Stu Pro, great Nick. Uh, before going into my main topic, I just want to say regarding the Narcan program that I did attend that, and I actually found that very worthwhile. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Pearl. Mr. Clayton, you made numerous campaign promises when you ran against Lord Gillen. 
One of them was to improve the state of the animal shelter. You acknowledge there were numerous issues which required immediate attention. Your promises assured your support from the many animal advocates of which I am one. Unfortunately, you have failed in a rather markedly living up to these promises. Incidentally, your promises were also severely curtailed mailers, and as for the reservations of your commissioners, didn't work out very well either. However, as many of them are here, you may want to fulfill that, that pledge now. I suspect not, however. Let us turn our attention back to the animal shelter. How did meaningful change come about when the same uncaring and or incompetent leadership remains in place? I was shown the director Pastore sends cats that are often adoptable to a feral cat sanctuary. These cats will likely not survive there. He gives a clean bill of health after personally inspecting the facility in Utica that turns out to be abominable. Our behaviorist has claimed to have numerous necessary credentials and the fact that she did not possess at the time. Our dogs languish inside, getting minimal exercise at best. Cats are often caged. These animals should all be getting quality socialization so the numerous, numerous adoptions will soon follow. How have you tried to improve shelter conditions? Even Laura Gillen gave it a fresh coat of paint. I would hope that you'd care about the fact that these animals are languishing away and suffering at the shelter when they should be enjoying being in, in a good home. That will happen under only when new leadership comes into place. Broken relationships with many private adoption facilities need to occur. Also, some of the shelter employees, as I found out on the phone, tend to be somewhat rude and uncooperative. They need to be reminded that they're like actually working for us, we're not working for them. He told everyone would be told we told you at election time. However, very little of what you have done has actually come, come to place. You now have the opportunity to correct this and do the right thing, and I don't see how it would actually hurt. You could make this shelter a model shelter, which other towns have hoped to emulate. It will not hurt you politically or the party to do the right thing. The money has already been allocated. Here's an idea for you. Mr. Yuri, who was arrested and charged with numerous counts of torturing animals, was exiled to the highway department. Maybe he's lonely, and Pastore and Fonte can be sent there to keep company. Yeah, have a nice day. Yeah, have a good morning. Have a good morning, Mr. Crowell. Thanks for the time I have said. I don't have any of the slips or anybody else. If not, have a wonderful day and a great memorial day weekend, everybody. Thank you all.